Okay, so in this uh, video we want to look at solving simultaneous linear and quadratic equations. Um, and the premise of this is relatively straightforward, but we can get into some quite complex algebra when we do so. So if we have a solve, if we're solving simultaneous linear and quadratic equations, graphically what we're doing is we're finding where a straight line intersects with a parabola. And there are three possibilities of what could happen. We could have two points of intersection that is the line crosses the parabola twice, such as the example we're seeing here on the left. We could have one point of intersection, and in this case the line is tangent to the parabola. Now there is an exception to this, obviously if we have vertical line there is only one point of intersection as well, and that's not a tangent. Okay, So a tangent is a line that just touches, just glances off the parabola. Um, obviously this wouldn't be an example of a, a tangent, but really that's a very trivial um, example. So you know, the equation of a vertical line is x equals a number. If you're solving a parabola, a quadratic, if you've got you know, x squared plus 5x minus 2 intersecting with this, it's hardly simultaneous equations. You're just subbing 2 into the equation. You're just finding when x equals 2, what does y equal? So in terms of, you know, yes, you can get one point of intersection this way. Don't let me suggest that that doesn't exist. But in terms of, that's a very, that's really just finding a point on a graph. Um, which I guess is what we're doing here, but it's a much more complex process. Just You're not genuinely solving simultaneous equations when you've got that situation. Um, and then the final situation would be where the line and the parabola never intersect at all, so that you get no points of intersection. So hopefully we're hearing echoes of, you know, two solutions, one solution or no solutions. Discriminant is going to be useful in some situations in this context. So again, trying to think about number of solutions, number of points of intersection, number of x-intercepts when a quadratic is involved, all those things should be leading your brain to draw connections to discriminant might be useful here. Okay, so when we have simultaneous linear and quadratic equations, um, algebraically they're best solved by substitution. And it's nearly always easier to solve the linear equation into the quadratic equation, but it really does just depend on the format by which you've been given both the equations. So remember substitution is useful when at least one of the equations is y equals or x equals. Okay, And we'll usually have that when we're finding the points of intersection between two graphs. Normally both of them are y equal, given to us as y equals something. And so it's simply about, you know, if you've got y equals something and y equals something, then you're just making these two things equal to each other. Um, Okay, so let's have a look at an example. We want to find the point or points of intersection between the line with equation 2y minus x equals negative 16 and the parabola y equals negative x squared plus 3x minus 2. Okay, so whilst I, I would normally say it's generally easier to sub the linear equation into the quadratic, in this instance, in the format that we've been given them, this is equal to y. So if we replace y in the other equation where we haven't got x or y as the subject, that's going to be the best way to go. So we are essentially, if we call that equation 1 and that equation 2, we are substituting equation 2 into equation 1. And we do that, we get 2 times y, so 2 times negative x squared plus 3x minus 2, take away x equals negative 16. Okay, so we're getting negative 2x squared, I'm just expanding out the brackets, plus 6x minus 4 minus x equals negative 16, negative 2x squared, um, 6x minus x is 5x, and negative 4 plus 16 is negative, sorry, it's positive 12. Now, it's always much easier to solve quadratics if you don't have a negative leading term, negative x squared term, so let's multiply everything by negative 1 and get 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. You could have got straight to this line by instead adding everything from the left to the right um, in the first instance. Okay, so now we've got this equation to solve to find the points of intersection. This is a harder or non-monic quadratic because we have something other than 1x squared here. So we're going to first of all try to factorise. 2 times negative 12 is negative 24. We're looking for factors of negative 24 that add up to negative 5 and they do exist negative 8 and positive 3 and so we can factorise so we don't need completing the square or quadratic formula or anything like that. So I'm going to break up the middle term negative 5x using minus 8x plus 3x. So we're going to have 2x squared take away 8x plus 3x minus 12 equals 0. So all we've done there is simply take negative 5x and rewritten it, split it into two terms using these factors. Okay. 
Hopefully this is a reasonably familiar process for a lot of you. If you have another method, if you're comfortable factoring this just by inspection, sort of trial and error, perfectly fine. I don't care how you factorise it, as long as at this point in your mathematical career you can factorise a quadratic that looks like this. Um, I'm going to factorise by grouping once I've split my middle term. So 2x, common factors in the first two terms, leaves us with x minus 4. In the second two terms, positive 3 is a common factor, leaves us with x minus 4. Okay, now x minus 4 is the common factor, so we take that out. And when we take out x minus 4, we're left with 2x plus 3. Okay, fully factorised. So x minus 4 equals 0, which means x equals 4. Or 2x plus 3 equals 0. 2x equals negative 3. x equals negative 3 on 2. Now, we haven't finished. Find the point or points of intersection. So we've got the, what we've found here is the x coordinates. We can see they intersect twice. We found the x coordinates and now we want to find the y coordinates. Now it's always easier to substitute the x values back into the linear equation. Then you don't have to square any fractions or anything like that. Um, it's always best to use the linear equation, even though in this instance, y isn't the subject there, I would still go back into the linear equation. So this means that 2y take away x, which is 4 in this instance, is negative 16. So 2y adding 4 is negative 12, and so y is negative 6, okay? So therefore, one of the points is 4, negative 6. Let's do the other one. This means that 2y minus, uh, it's minus x, so it's going to be minus minus 3 on 2, so plus 3 on 2 equals negative 16. Um, we could do it a couple of different things here. I'm going to double everything just to get rid of the fractions. So that's 4y plus 3 equals negative 32. Now I'm going to worry about solving taking away 3, so 4y equals negative 35, um, and then dividing by 4, so y is negative 35 on 4. And so therefore we also have the point negative 3 on 2, negative 35 on 4. So two points of intersection, and we've given the coordinates of those two points. Okay, example 2, again, another... Um, instance of a quite complex question which is going to require us to put together a lot of our quadratic knowledge including discriminant, quadratic inequalities, all those sorts of things. Okay. Um, actually we won't need a quadratic inequality for this particular example but examples such of the, as these could require quadratic inequalities. So we want to find the value of k such that the line with the equation y equals um, x plus 1 is tangent to the parabola with equation y equals x squared plus 2x plus k. Okay, if it's tangent to the parabola, that means that they have one point of intersection. Okay, that's important. Okay, so to find the points of intersection, we would solve the equation simultaneously. In this case, that's going to be just easy to make them equal to each other. They both equal y, so therefore if we substitute for y, we're just going to get x plus 1 equals 2x plus, no, x squared plus 2x plus k. We can write it the other way around. x squared plus 2x plus k is equal to x plus 1. Same thing. Okay, so this is the equation we would need to solve in order to find the points of intersection. We need this equation to have one solution because we only want one point of intersection. So we need this quadratic equation to have a discriminant that equals zero. Okay. So before we can calculate the discriminant, we need to make one side equal to zero so we can see what our a and our b and our c values are, and then we can go from there. So x squared, I'm going to take away x from both sides, so that's plus x, and I'm going to subtract one from both sides, so I've got plus k minus one equals zero. So now we've got our a and our b and our c, okay, so it's one x squared plus one times x plus k minus 1, okay, so a is 1, b is 1, and c is k minus 1, okay, so if we need one solution, we need our discriminant to equal 0, let's calculate our discriminant first, discriminant is b squared minus 4 times a times c, okay, so that is 1 minus 4 lots of k minus 1, 1 minus 4k plus 4 when I expand out those brackets, and so that is 5 minus 4k. Now, we need the discriminant to equal 0 
for one solution, which means if we have one solution to this equation, we have one point of intersection, which means the parabola and the, and the linear graph are tangent. Um, and so we need 5 minus 4k to equal 0, which means 4k equals 5, which means that k equals 5 on 4. Okay, so as I said, that's, that's another example of where the discriminant becomes um, useful. So as I said, you're not going to get questions involving the discriminant that are just how many solutions does this parabola have, how many x-intercepts does this parabola have. Um, they're going, you're going to be using the discriminant in these more complex examples. And they can get more complex than this because if your discriminant ends up being a quadratic expression, which it can if you have an unknown value for b, because then you get, like if, you're, if you had a k in the coefficient for um, of x, if b was in terms of k, then your discriminant would involve a k squared and you would have something quadratic. And if you wanted two solutions, you'd be looking at when that quadratic is bigger than zero, so you might then need to think about quadratic inequality and all of those sorts of things. So sometimes you, people can get confused because you lose track of, you end up solving a quadratic inequality, but that quadratic is about the discriminant, it's not about your original quadratics, it's about keeping track of what you're doing and being clear of what you're doing. There are going to be lots of steps here though, so please let's get past the idea that we're dealing with questions where we only ever test one thing and we just do one thing and we just execute it and then we're done. You're going to need to bring together lots of skills here and this is where things start to get hard but this is genuinely where things start to get maths methods in. Okay? Um, I was going to say one other thing about this. So yeah, I was just going to have a quick look at sort of, you know, algebraic graphically what's actually happening here. So we've got the graph of x plus 1. It's that. And then we've got this parabola where we don't know what k is. Okay, so if we were to just say, for example, look at x squared plus 2x, so where k is 0, they clearly intersect twice. Okay, so if we were to edit that equation and make it, you know, plus 0.5, for example, still intersecting twice. If we were to edit that and make it plus 1, still intersecting twice, although it's getting closer. So you can see what's happening here. If we have a look at 5 on 4, which is 1.25, that's where we're getting it. It's a tangent. If we were to make it bigger than 1.25, so let's make it say 1.5, it's now up above that line and so it's no, never going to intersect. So again, this is about thinking, well, we can also learn from this idea, this specific question asked us about one solution, but we could also answer the questions that weren't asked, which would mean we get no solutions if discriminant is negative, which is if 5 minus 4k is negative, which is 5 less than 4k, 5 on 4 is less than k, so when k is bigger than 5 on 4, we get no solutions, which is what we're seeing illustrated there. If k is bigger than 1.25, at the moment I've got it drawn on the cows as 1.5, we see we get no solutions. And if it's anything bigger than that, even big, you know, if k were to equal 25, it's not, you're not going to get any solutions. Um, and we can also see that we'll get two solutions if our discriminant is positive, which is if 5 minus 4k is bigger than 0, which is 5 is bigger than 4k, um, 5 on 4 is bigger than k, which is the same as saying that k is less than 5 on 4. So again, we saw that when k was anything less than 1.25. So for example, if we change it back to something less than 1.25, so just 1, for example, we're getting those two solutions. Okay, so it didn't ask for this, but they're essentially all the same question. Okay, so um, discriminant is going to come up in examples such as this. All right, so some good practice um, that's definitely important for you to do: exercise three J in your textbook.